Hello and welcome to another Bird ID Made Easy with me. Um, so this time we'll be looking at autumn acros, uh, so looking at reed, marsh, blithes and... Yeah, so reed, marsh and blithes, reed warbler. Um, so these are ver three very similar species and uh, whilst looking up a lot of papers I, find, I found that... Um, a lot of them, the only thing really that they agree in is that there's a lot of variation between all of the species and this causes a lot of overlap, unfortunately, which actually makes positive IDs in the field quite difficult without good photos. Um, but what I've tried to do is find the most obvious and unique features so that you can ID them in the field as far as possible. Um, so we'll start off with a reed warbler here. And uh, so the first thing to say is the white eye ring, uh, which stands out quite a lot in the field. Um, then you've got the thin, buffy supercilium, which doesn't extend past the eye, only, it's only in front of the eye. Um, uh, it's got this buffy chest below, um, but a white throat. So that stands out quite a lot, this white throat. Um, and if we move on to this one, we can see here that the the back is quite of a rich, rusty brown. Uh, it's not as evident in this, but in the next photo it should be. Um, it's got it's quite a it's got quite a long bill, really, um, and a quite a decently sloped forehead, um, which yeah, which is quite unique to reed warbler. Um, and it's got these dark legs here. So then if we move on to the next one, we can see something uh, that I don't know who agrees with it, but this is what Martin Garner says quite a lot of the time, that it's got these kind of oily um, secondaries, primaries and tertials kind of thing. So, um, it, which the other which both Marsh and Blythe Reed Warbler don't really have as much. So it's got, yeah, so it's got these oily feathers here. Um, and here you can really actually see the dark brown colours that you get in um, Eurasian Reed Warbler, which you don't get in other um, acros, really. Uh, then you've got the rump as well, which in the field appears... Uh, more different to um, the back and the wings. It's it's more of a uh, rusty brown. So that yeah, so it sticks out quite a bit. The rump actually, I find. Um, then we can move on to the marsh warbler. Uh, this is generally found in different habitats. So more in um, herbage, that kind of thing. Uh, so, first things to note are the absence of a eye ring in this bird, not so much annoyingly, but uh, yeah, it, ha it has no eye ring. Um, let a very indistinct um, supercilium. Uh, it's generally a lighter colour, um, and yeah, so th the lighter colour being more of a olivey brown colour. Uh, yes, um, so the bill also is a shorter bill than you get with the reed warbler and its primary projection here um, is the largest out of the three warblers, uh, acros that we're looking at um, and yeah so it's it's approximately thought to be about half the size of the exposed tertials here so a very long primary projection really and then you've got um, uh, yeah so the primary projection is very long and then they're evenly spaced which isn't very easy to see in the field but um, should be visible in any decent photograph really um, then yeah so the even spacing and then also luckily you've got these uh, pale tips to the primaries which you don't really get in the other warblers and brighter legs than the reed warbler so the reed warb um, Eurasian reed warbler was more of a 
a dark, darker colour, but um, the legs are actually something that uh, can vary a little bit and there can be quite a bit of overlap. So it's not the greatest feature to look at, but something perhaps to look at when you think you've got a marsh warbler and then uh, that can be an extra feature. But it's not something to first go by, really. Um, uh, and then, oh, the head also, it's much more rounded than the um, reed warbler. So you've got even um, more sloped forehead here, which you, which is especially due to the um, crown being slightly raised. So that makes it slightly more um, sh uh, sharp. But um, but in general, it is slightly slightly more raised um, than the reed warbler, and it has a rounder head. Um, so then we move on to this one. And we can see that in this one, we can really see that it's a kind of more paler bird uh, and more pallid than the uh, than the reed warbler. Uh, this is, I think, actually a immature, so it's even more so. Um, uh, in this one, we can really see how re they are actually a lot more yellow. Uh, they can really appear very yellow. Um, and it has these yellow streaks on the chest and the underparts are really just a washed yellow all over. Uh, and in the spring, you actually have, you can't see it that much in this photo, but you have uh, a kind of rusty yellow rump. But this, is only, this only occurs in the spring, I think. You don't really get that that much in the autumn. Uh, then we move on to Blythe's Reed Warbler. Uh, and its song post is really um, not in herbage like marsh warbler or anything like that. It's more um, on in bushes or lower in trees, really. So it's not really found as much singing in the reeds or that kind of thing like reed warbler. Uh, the supercilium, you can't see it that much in this bird, but it's much, much more distinct. And it goes behind the eye and you can really see it. Um, Something to note, it hasn't got the eye ring, so it makes it almost, the eye ring is almost exclusive to uh, Eurasian reed warbler, really. Um, and then, um, and then you've got a mainly dark tapering bill that doesn't look so much in this photo, but that's quite, because it's quite close, but at a distance, um, it's kind of dark. The bill is generally darker than um, marsh or reed warbler. Uh, its underparts are a lot more white um, than you get with any of the other acros that we've looked at. So it's got this kind of washed out white chest and belly. Uh, the head is, uh, sorry, a, a grey, it's got a greyish head and its uh, back and tail and all that is more, is quite a, um, it's quite an olive greyish back whereas the marsh warbler was more of a, a brownie um brownie rusty olive grey back uh it's got bronze colored wings uh and uh whilst we're looking at the wings uh it's probably best to say about the primary projection which is the smallest out of all of these birds and it's yeah so it's got a instantly it should have a really instantly noticeable um, noticeably short primary projection and here unlike marsh warbler it's only a third of the length of the exposed tertials whereas marsh warbler was half the length so it's far smaller in its primary projection really um, and its wings are generally quite uh, yeah it's uniformly coloured really and um, there's no contrasting fringes or anything like that to it uh, then we can look here and we can see that it looks kind of long tailed because of its uh, short primary projection and then it also looks quite long long uh, beaked because of its shallow sloped um, forehead. Um, it's got quite a featureless back really so there's not very many markings on it like with the other one like with the other two acros so it's quite uniformly coloured. 
Um, and yeah, so the back has got this cold olive grey brown back and the rump is the same really. Um, the feet in general should be more grey than on the other acros but it's not that visible really and the bird usually has a kind of active tail movement when you're watching it so it's quite often like flicking it or that kind of thing. Uh, and something I read up about actually was that Marsh, uh, sorry, Blythe's reed warbler has this distinctive pose, which it's got actually in this picture, I think, um, where it has this kind of banana shaped pose, um, which is quite an interesting feature, I thought. And then if we look here, we can see the uh, how it really has a featureless back, really, with where it's completely uniform across the whole back and. Uh, it's not a very good photo, but still you can see it's all kind of the same colour. Rump stays the same colour as well, and it's kind of plain. Um, then we can move on to the song, which is, I would say, probably the songs of the three uh, birds. is probably the most easy uh, easy way of defining these three birds. However, uh, you're not always given the lucky opportunity to hear them cool. So if we listen quickly to the Eurasian reed warbler, it has a consist uh sorry, it consists of jittery notes which repeat two to three times. Uh, then with marsh warbler, you have the expert mimicry broken by occasional dry trills. So here it's mimicking a swallow. It's not really till the end that you get the uh, marsh warbler kind of trill. Yeah, so you could hear at the end there what the marsh warbler kind of does. And then this one, it has a masterful mimicry repeated at a uh, slow pace with clicking call between each phrase. Um, so, yeah, uh, between each phrase of it has this, yeah, you can hear it quite well, actually. There, that, that clicking, that ticking. Yeah, so the call really makes these three birds quite distinct, and I'd recommend looking up um, some more stuff about it online on something like Zeno Canto or something like that. Anyway, uh, that's the end of that one, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you want to, you can look back at my two of my old videos. I'm hoping to make more a larger collection, so petrels and large shearwaters. So, um, thanks for watching.